slippery slope that if you accept it, like, well, it's just first period, it's just sixth period, it's just third period, you know, it's just Monday, oh my God, it's just Friday, then you can realize how a person can eliminate so much of their life with that word just, you know, just. And so we have to be careful with it because the word just is a word of acceptance, accepting things as they are. And maybe that's fine for other people, but you have to decide at some point if that's, if that's the right thing for you to accept. Is it, you know, just Monday? Is it just your teenage years? Is it just your first year of college? Is it just your first job? Is it just Monday? And you'll find that a lot of those justs add up to a huge chunk of your life that is all of a sudden one day just gone and trying to figure out where the hell it all went. How many of you, if you could kill somebody and get away with it, you absolutely would? I just want to know who I can push and who I can't, that's all. <laughs> How many of you would be willing to admit it if you could, <laughs> that you would do it if you could? <laughs> Smart folks, all right. Yeah, it's that, it's that normal person thing that actually strikes me, so. That's actually a pretty good way of understanding it. A normal person is a person who's like me. An abnormal person is a person who's, who's not like me. So if we, if we apply that understanding, how many normal people are there really in societies? Not many, yeah, not many. Because uh, it really is like, because we, when we ask that question, how many of us would kill somebody if we thought we could get away with it? A bunch of us are like, <laughs> we're not raising our hands. And I'm like, come on, if it's you, raise your hand. And we're like, mm. because we're thinking that's a not, that that's not a normal thing for people to think. But if, but if I could get into your brains and actually like, like a puppet master, I like, would cause you to raise your hands if you have thought about it. And in fact, when I asked that question, I wonder how many of us started thinking about it at that moment, we have somebody in mind even. And yet, that's probably the majority, or at least a large portion of us. And yet, we think of that as being not normal. But if it's a large portion of us, then that, that means quite literally, it, it, is, it is normal. It's just suppressed. It's just something that we won't talk about. And so, of course, now it begs that question, why won't we talk about it? Well, if I talk about it, people are going to judge us. Who's judging you in those circumstances? We have a word for it. Begins with an H, ends with hypocrite. It's people who are hypocrites who, who are going to say, oh, and they clutch their pearls. My goodness, I would never think about killing a person. And right in their mind right now, they're thinking about somebody right now. And maybe even trying to plan about how to do it. But we also understand that as soon as we start thinking about it, that now it becomes real. I remember... <clears throat> I was just telling somebody recently about this. Um, I have a friend. I'm just bragging. I have a friend. No, I, <laughs> I have a, a, a friend up in Los Angeles. Um, most of my friends get nicknames. He's, he's Crazy Brandon. And he's Crazy Brandon because his name is Brandon. And he's crazy. He's crazy. He was a drummer in a, in a band I was in. And drummers are usually crazy. So, um, but he's particularly crazy. He was, uh, he called me up one day because he was in an armed standoff with the Pomona SWAT team um, in, at his house. He barricaded his house and his house was surrounded by the, uh, in a long story, that's in a, for another time, but um, he ended up going to, uh, going to the, what's called the puzzle factory. He ended up going to the psychiatric ward and he had a 5150 and, and everything. So he's actually crazy, but you need to have people like that in your life because you never know, you know, having a crazy person can be helpful sometimes. Don't, don't limit yourself. But um, I remember one time I was sitting there with Crazy Brandon and this other friend of ours, and I couldn't even tell you how it came up, but somehow somebody mentioned about like robbing a, uh, an armed truck, you know, the, the arm, you know, they, they transport the money, you know? And so we were, you know, um, talking about it and like, oh, you know, I wonder how much money would be there. And, you know, I mean, the thing is like, when you, when you do it, it has to be organized, you have to know, and no joke, like maybe like 45 minutes later or so, an hour later, we're all looking at each other and we're like, are we doing this? 
because the conversation had become so detailed and we, had, we were getting down to specifics, we were thinking about all of the contingencies and, and, it, and all of a sudden it became super real because we had spent so much time talking about it. And I wonder if there's anything like that in your life where you, you realize that if you start to indulge in it, that all of a sudden it becomes real and then you actually might find yourself doing it. In fact, I bet there are a lot of things in your life that that happens with and you, may, and you might not even realize it. Like I'm thinking about, um, I'm trying to think of how, how deep I wanna go into that. Um, I don't know, maybe you have a, uh, a significant other and you're committed to them, you love them, that's the person for you. But you, know, you show up to class on the first day and there's someone sitting next to you in your math class and you're just, you, know, you say hi and you say hi, but it's just a hi, that's all, it's no big deal. And then um, maybe a couple days later, they, they ask you something about the homework or whatever. It's like, you can answer that. It's about the class. It's just the homework, you know? And then maybe you get a, like a friend request from them. But that makes sense because you're friends with lots of people, you know? And everybody's at school together. And so, you know, it, it makes sense, of course, that you would. And then maybe that person sends you a message. But it's about homework. You know, that's all it is. It's just about homework. And then, you know, the, you know and it's early. It's like 7 o'clock. So it makes sense that they'd be doing that. And then... A few days later, they send you another message, but that one's a little bit later. You know, they're, oh, I'm trying to get this stuff done for, for math class. Oh, okay. And then later on, you know, maybe a couple weeks later, now the conversations start to get later. You know, midnight, one o'clock, and they start to become about things very different from math. Well, that's kind of how all of that stuff starts. We rationalize it. We say, well, you know, it, it's only this. It's just that. And you're going to find that a lot of the, of, the, of, the, of the slopes that you slip down in your life are going to begin with that word, just. No, it's just this, or it's, or it's just that. I remember when I was uh, a first year teacher, there was a teacher, she's not here anymore, and she's been gone long enough now that none of you will have had her. But um, she quit a couple years ago, she, um, she rage quit. She walked into the office one morning and she told the principal, hey, I met with my financial advisor yesterday, and it turns out I can retire. And by the way, this is mid-semester. I think this is like, September, October, something like that. And the principal was like, oh wow, uh, what, what, uh, at the end of the semester, at the end of the year? And she said, no, no, right now, I'm not going to first period. Just wanted to let you know, so best of luck. And she left and she quit. And it's funny, because I've told that sort of people and they've been like, yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. Because if you quit that way, it must tell you that you absolutely hate your job. And then if that's the case, think about how much damage that person has done to students for the past 20 something years. Because what we're doing here is we're not making wages. If you're having a bad day, you're actually affecting people's lives. If you're carrying this out, that, that attitude of, I hate this place, over into how you t teach and how you prepare people, you're, you're, you're damaging people's lives. You're not just like, you know, screwing up a widget on the, on the, on the conveyor belt or something. And so, Anyway, when I was a first year teacher, um, sometimes you don't get a classroom, you have to like, travel to different classrooms for all of your, all of your classes. So um, she was, um, she was, I was traveling to her classroom sixth period. And so one day I was talking to her and I was saying, I'm having a lot of trouble with my first period class, getting them animated and motivated. And she's like, it, you know, it's, it's, it's first period. That's how she talked. It's first period. You, they're not awake yet. You can't get them going. It's just, you really can't do much that early in the morning. I'm like, that sucks, because <laughs> that's like, you know, a third of our day. And then um, a little while later, I was talking to her about my sixth grade class, which I was in her classroom for, and I had 10th graders, and I'm like, you know, it's hard to keep them focused, and like, she's like, well, you know, it's the end of the day, it's after lunch, and they're squirrely, and they just want to go home. It's really hard to get anything done, that last period. I'm like, well, crap, that's two thirds of the day, and then nothing can be done. And then you can probably predict the next thing I went to her with, which was my, uh, my third period class, same idea. And she's like, you know what, it's after nutrition, it's before lunch, they're hungry, they're unfocused, you really can't teach them much during third period. So what I learned from that person was you can't teach at all at any point during the day. It was a slippery slope that if you accepted like, well, it's just first period, it's just sixth period, it's just third period, you know, it's just Monday. Oh my God, it's just Friday then you can realize how a person can eliminate so much of their life with that word just, you know, just. And so we have to be careful with it because the word just is a word of acceptance, accepting things as they are. 
And maybe that's fine for other people, but you have to decide at some point if that's, if that's the right thing for you to accept. Is it, you know, just Monday? Is it just your teenage years? Is it just your first year of college? Is it just your first job? Is it just Monday? And you'll find that a lot of those justs add up to a huge chunk of your life that is all of a sudden one day just gone and kind of figure out where the hell it all went. And it's hard for us to conceptualize, but talk to some old people that you know. You know talk to some old people you know and find out from them if, if a lot of their life, I mean, you probably wouldn't ask them that way, but find out if a lot of their life went away that way and how much they would give to get all of those, those just times back. Mm -hmm. What was that movie? Maybe it's the movie, I think it's called Switch. I think it's with Jim Carrey or something like that, or remote, yeah. It's, it's about a guy who, I, he, I've never seen the movie before, but I've seen this one scene. He gets a hold of a remote control where he can fast forward over life, fast forward over events. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I've never seen it, but I, 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 I guess he can't rewind, right? He can only go fast forward. And so he, and he's like, this is great, because now like when he's driving home from work, he can just fast forward over the drive home from work and he can just be home immediately. If there's something that he doesn't want to attend, like an event, he can just fast forward over it. He doesn't actually have to go through it. And if I remember the scene correctly, at one point he finds himself, now all of a sudden he's old. And he's like fast forwarded over these massive chunks of his life that he can't go back and relive again. And he can start to see the value in, in, these, in these moments. Like I was, um, before I did this, before I was a teacher, one of my, one of my other jobs I've had before in my life, I was a financial planner. Meaning that people would come to me with money and say, hey, you know, here's a few million dollars, how do I invest this? And I'd help them kind of work out investment schemes. I still do it a little bit for, for, for friends, but um, there was a guy who, who worked in my office, and my office was in, was in, um, was in um, Mission Valley. And this guy lived in Murrieta. It's like a 120 mile drive. And this guy would make that drive three or four days every week. And I would ask him, what do you do, man? That's like a two and a half hour drive. And he goes, I just get on the freeway, I go into autopilot. He says, I don't remember anything when I get onto the freeway until about two exits before I get off by my house. And I started doing the math in my head, I'm like, dude, that's a lot, that's, that's a, you know, a day and a half every month of just going into autopilot and forgetting about life. And, and he goes, that sounds depressing when you put it that way. And I said, you mean when, when I, it sounds depressing when I just tell the truth? He goes, yes, exactly. And when you describe the scene as it actually is. So there's that word just that, you know, he's, oh, it's just the drive home, it's just that. But there's a lot that you could maybe do during that time, I don't know, but I guess we have to find a way to redeem the time, to make the most of it, and to find a way to make the most of the time in, in productive ways, in useful ways, ways that actually build us up and lift us up. And so, But that's not really like a, a normal thought for a lot of us to have. But what will happen is that when you start to embrace your life that way and you understand how valuable your time is and how much, you know, you just can't get time back. You might be able to fast forward over things by glazing over and, and like letting your mind drift off someplace else rather than in the moment that you are. And all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, it's, t it's, 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 nine, it's you know, 10 o'clock, 10 10.30? Wow, okay, time to go. But you can't go back and get whatever it is that you could have gotten out of that time. And so whatever it is that you're glazing over, hopefully it, it, it's meaningful, it's useful. And please don't take from that that I'm saying you should always be 100% focused on where you are right now. Whatever it is that your mind is going towards, hopefully it's going towards something that's actually making you better and, you, and, and building you up so that later on in, down the road, you'll be able to, you know, to, to be the thing that you want it to be. Hopefully you're getting something out of it that's building you because sometimes where you are right now is not useful for you. It's not helpful for you. It's just hard to know if it is. You know, it's just hard to know if it is. Like I have students that, I mean, like I said, I have, I have so few rules in my class you know, don't put your head down. Don't have AirPods in while I'm talking. And you know, I have students who have AirPods in while I'm talking, and, but they're paying attention. They're not listening to music. They're just kind of dancing along because my, my, my voice has such a natural music to it. That's why they'll be like this, or they'll be like, with their foot up to a beat. Yeah. Not because they're ignoring the class, but, and not listening to the same song they've listened to a hundred times. But who knows? Maybe there's something that could have happened that could have changed your life. Not from me, but maybe one of you guys say something that could have changed someone's life, but you'd never know it because you're t you know, tapping along with it. And doing something that you could do any other time. You've got that song perpetually on your, on your, on your device. You listen to it any time, but you can't live that moment. 
<coughs> it's like if you ever go to a concert and people re record it, how often do you guys go back and watch those videos? Sometimes. Sometimes? I really wonder. I, I, might, it, I, I really don't know. It's like, <coughs> sorry, like 4th of July. Don't raise your hand on this one, but I wonder how many of you record the fireworks. And then you go back later and you watch it, and you're like, this is just as stunning on the phone as it was in real life. <laughs> I'm so glad I recorded this. Maybe there's a reason that, that's a, that's a damn good mark there, like I said. I thought it was something else, because it's so good. And so what is it to be normal? You know, is it normal to, to, to record those kinds of things? I suppose so, I suppose so. But it's interesting that we, that we talk about what that thing is, like it's a nine to five, it's to be like me. It's so hard for us to define this thing. So what do we have to do? We have to use analogies. We have to describe what it's like. This is, you know, to fit it, to, to do these things is to be normal, but we can't explain what normal itself actually is. Because none of us knows what normal actually is. We know what we are, and maybe, that, maybe, maybe that's enough to know what we are. And then maybe it might be a matter of we don't fit in with other people. That's okay. Who's the abnormal one? Is it you or them? Yes. Yes. The only normal people you know are the people that you don't know very well. I'll say that again. The only normal people that you know are people that you don't know very well. If you doubt that, I think I just proved at the beginning of class when I asked you how many of you would, would kill a person if you could get away with it. And a bunch of you kind of laughed and smiled and a couple of heads nodded, but no, only one hand went up. So that's the one person I will trust, because I know that that person will, will, will admit that. But now I, I could ask you a whole, whole bunch of uncomfortable questions. Hey, raise your hand if you've ever thought about, about this, or if you've ever thought about that. If you, and then we'll, uh, our hands won't go up. Why? Because I, 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 would, I would never. I would never. I guess you're normal in that you're lying. And I guess you're normal in that you're, you're being a hypocrite. Um, Sorry if that strikes anybody. No, I'm not sorry. You should, you should, we should hear that. Because at least we should know what we are. We should, at least we should know. Because it isn't a, a judgment that's coming from me. I'm the one who, I'm not the one who's telling you it's terrible to have those thoughts. You're the one telling yourself it's terrible to have those thoughts, which is why you won't acknowledge that you have those thoughts. I wonder how many of you have suicidal ideations sometimes. And, oh, I got some attention. I wonder how many of you ever, are ever going over Coronado Bridge and you wonder how easy it would be to jump off of that thing. Well, not me, I would never. Those are just intrusive thoughts. Yes, they are just intrusive. Yeah, well, there's that word again, isn't it? It's just an intrusive thought. No, it's not just that. There's something in you that causes you to have those ideations, to have those thoughts. What is it? What's in there? I, I, I don't want to talk about it. And we turn the music up and we distract ourselves because we don't want to acknowledge the thing that, that, that we are. We don't want to acknowledge what's in the closet. We don't want to acknowledge that the monster that's in there is actually inside of us. And we aren't ready yet to confront the monster. But if you're not ready to confront the monster, then you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, surprise, surprise, you feel like you don't belong. But if we were just, that, that's the funny thing about it. If we were just honest, we would realize, wow, we fit in way better than we even realized. You know how many of us have ever thought about trying, trying to kill somebody? I, I, every day, and we all laugh about it, okay. How many of us ever had this kind of you know terrible thoughts like we want to I don't know push over some old person and take their wallet oh yeah, that's all that's us now what I hope you haven't had but you you get the idea more of us have had these terrible ideas than than, than are willing to admit it and so when we ask when we talk about then what every normal person has to be tempted at times to just spit upon our hands hoist the black flag and begin slitting throats he's not necessarily talking literally but he's talking about like doing pirate ship. You know, all of us at times, the normal reaction to things is to, is to want to do that. Now, notice he's saying it isn't to, to, to do it. He's saying it's not normal to do it. It's normal to be tempted to do it. But then what's normal for us is also to use our self-control so that we don't do it. He's talking about that monster. It's normal for us to have the monster. It's abnormal for us to not have the monster. And that's one of the things that causes us to... To, to feel so alienated and displaced, is that we all have that monster. We know that we do. And yet we're being, we're kind of being encultured in a society that's telling us not to have that monster, not to, 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 to have those intrusive thoughts. You can't control your intrusive thoughts. 
But what you can do is you can control how you respond to them. You can suppress them and just try to push them down. You go, I wanna have this. But another really interesting thing to do is to ask yourself, why am I having these thoughts? What does that say about me? I wonder, why, I wonder where that's coming from. You know, if you ever sit there and go, I wonder if normal people are like this. Yes, chances are yes. Overwhelmingly, the chances are yes. You know, there's a difference between people who have them and then people who indulge them and people who think about, you know, who act on them. Serial killers have those same thoughts that you do. They act on them because they indulge in them. They don't, they don't sit there and figure out what's wrong with them or what, or what it is that's, that's causing them to have that and, and trying to, to deal with that. They instead, they embrace it, they indulge it. That's what makes them a serial killer. But that's, there's gonna be a neurological function probably there called psychopathy, which I know some of you I think were with me a couple of years ago when we studied psychopathy. So you might have a bit of an understanding about why that, why that is. So it's normal to have those thoughts. It's normal to be tempted, but maybe don't do it, that's all. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?